cataractcoach.com with an interesting case. It is a routine cataract, but one thing that's different is the pattern of the lens cortical opacities. From about the 7 o'clock to about the 12 o'clock position in your view, the cortical opacities are blocking just about the position where our capsule rexus will go. So how do we deal with this? Well, we could certainly fire up the half million dollar femtosecond laser and use that to create the capsulotomy. But there's another way as well, and that's going to be to do our traditional capsulorexis, but to be very careful of where we start and stop each grab of the capsulorexis as we're tearing it. Let me show you what I mean. So we've made the main incision here. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to adjust the lighting a little bit. We want to emphasize the red reflex lighting. There you go. So now it's primarily retroillumination with the strong red reflex. We'll start our capsorexis in the area that we can see. So let's go here and do the inferior portion first. So inferior in your screen. So there's the capsorexis. I'm measuring with the device just to make sure I know what five millimeters is going to be. And we continue holding the forceps and bringing the rexus around. And now watch carefully. We'll take the rexus and stop only when I can see where I've left it. So in between those spikes of cortex, that's where you can let go of the, the lens capsule and then be able to see it to re-grab it. Now that I know I have a complete capsule rexus, let's do some hydro dissection here. So hydro dissection, again, look at the incision. Notice how we've lost a little viscoelastic. This is the reason why I like to put in a little extra dollop of the dispersive viscoelastic prior to putting the phaco probe in the eye. Here's our probe. Again, we're doing a chop technique, basically my standard technique for most cases, buzzing over the chopper and the probe, and we try to split the nucleus. There we go. With a lens like this, there are a lot of opacities, but it's not particularly dense. So that single chop at the beginning of the case is likely going to be sufficient to remove the whole nucleus. So I'll bring up the cataract pieces here, just about the iris plane. There's the chopper going around for an additional chop. And now the job of the chopper is to push the cataract pieces in front of the phaco probe. Again, you don't want the pieces to go in the sub-incisional space or underneath the phaco probe. Rather, they should be at the iris plane in front of the probe. Chopper's being placed in the protective position. Because of all those cortical opacities, the view's not the greatest. And so we want to be very careful just to protect and make sure that posterior capsule doesn't come up. There's a little bit of the epinuclear shell. We take that out. Now the view improves quite a bit. Last little nuclear piece is coming out. There's the last one. And we're ready for irrigation aspiration. So you can see there we do have a nice round capsorexis. And that'll be about 5 millimeters in diameter. You can you notice at the beginning how I used the capsorexis forceps to actually do the measuring of the capsulotomy diameter. Those forceps have a mark that's two and a half millimeters from the tip, which corresponds to the radius, and a second mark five millimeters from the tip, and that corresponds to the appropriate diameter of our capsular axis. So cortex being removed here now in the sub-incisional space. And it's looking pretty darn good. In this case, we'll be putting in a monofocal, single-piece acrylic lens with aspheric optics. And that's for a patient goal of emetropia or plano post-op. Filling the capsule bag now with our cohesive viscoelastic. There we can see the outline of our rexus, which looks great. Nice and round. And so certainly we didn't need to use the half-million-dollar femtosecond laser. Now, the femtosecond laser is a fantastic tool for certain cases, and uh, surgeons certainly use it quite a bit in our surgery center. So I'm certainly not disparaging it. It's a valuable tool for the right surgeons in the right cases. So here comes the lens being unfolded, and we'll put it into position and help those haptics completely unfold. I do use the femtosecond laser for certain cases. In this particular case, the patient really couldn't afford the additional fees, and I told her that it was no worry. We'd still be able to do a beautiful job for her. So removing the viscoelastic from behind the lens, and then centering up the optic, and you can see we'll have very nice 360-degree overlap of the capsorexis edge on top of the optic. 
Of course, we know that optic is a 6 millimeter optic in diameter, edge to edge, and therefore you'll see our caps rexus, which is overlapping it, is just about 5 millimeters as planned. To seal the incision, I hydrate back and forth. I would prefer this method as opposed to doing big boluses in the corners of the incision. So again, back and forth. And I want to do just the bare minimum amount of hydration required to get an appropriately sealing incision. Remember, too much hydration can actually induce astigmatism for days or longer until it fully resolves. Again, there's the lens in good position with overlap of the optic. And let's seal this up and call it a day. Thank you for watching.